All right, guys, Ken Selville here today, having a quick look at some uh, a sick plant. It's not really sick, but I've um, got orchid cactuses. I've got quite a few different ones, uh, typically the epiphyllum group. Um, the epiphyllums are a tropical, epiphytic um, cactus, basically it lives in the rainforest, and uh, they hang out of trees and grow here and there. Some climb and some trail. This one trails. Uh, this guy is called the Pink Empress, uh, which is quite a beautiful pink orchid type um, cactus, blooming cactus. Uh, I've ignored this guy quite a bit, so he's got really terribly uh, dehydrated. The, uh, the foliage on this thing is so bad, um, you know, here I'm a plant guy and I'm neglecting my plants. I have been misting it down with water, so I use filtered water or distilled water just to keep the water minerals under control. And uh, just try to soak the entire plant down to try to humidify it. Um, the issue there is, is that of course the air is so dry in the house that it just, uh, just doesn't do a real good job. It doesn't last very long and it evaporates away right away. So what I'm doing is just making sure I get the entire plant wet, tops and bottoms of the leaves, so I have to go all the way around the plant. And just making sure. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little mini greenhouse in a way for this guy. And uh, hopefully all goes well. He'll recover over a period of a few weeks. So I got them pretty soaked there. So I use these big uh, leaf bags, just uh, clear plastic leaf bags. Like here in the growing room, I have a high pressure sodium light, which helps to uh, keep some light on the plants. And uh, so all these plants that we have are all in storage here. But what we can do here is just sort of drape this over top of the plant and it's going to create like a little mini greenhouse for it. Now this bag, they make these bags in different sizes. And this bag is probably a bit too small for this plant, but hey, it's going to have to take what it gets, I guess. And so I'm just going around the plant making sure I can tuck as much as I can up inside the bag. The plant's pretty flexible. So what this does is this will create 100% humidity on this plant for a period of time, for as long as we leave it in there, even though I'm going to leave the bottom of it open so that uh, air can still get in from underneath. But there we go, we're creating this rainforest humidity situation for the plant, and yet it's still... Uh, you know, the light can still get through the plastic. So Clivia down here wants to get up inside there too. I'm sure he'd be happy with the humidity. Uh, so there you go, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Now what I will do as I go along is I'll just open a little hole up here. I'll just make a little hole about the size of my finger and stick the end of my misting bottle in there and give it a little mist maybe every couple days or so and uh, there you go got a little greenhouse there for the uh, for the sick plants so that will give us uh, give us some time so just remember that that when plants are badly dehydrated the leaves will shrivel it doesn't mean that they're dead but some of those leaves may actually die on this one some of them are quite severe I mean they're to the point of almost being paper but uh, I don't want to completely give up on it. So anyway, I'll add some extra pictures at the end here of some close-ups of these leaves. And um, yeah, we'll hopefully give you an idea of what you can do when you get plants that are severely dehydrated. Now what I've done here is I have soaked the root ball ahead of time so that I made sure there was moisture in there. Now misted it and covered it with the plastic. And I'll leave that plastic on there for at least about a month. And then... Uh, at that point I'll start to, uh, I'll just keep monitoring it and hopefully after about a month I'll take the plastic off and I'll go in and probably snip out a bunch of the dead stuff. 
So if there's any de dead leaves or anything like that, you know, I'll go in and just clean it up. So that's basically it for dehydrated epiphyllums or orchid cactus. But it does work on just about any kind of plant. Um, again, because orchid cactuses are a rainforest plant, they don't really like to be so dry. They don't like to be bone, bone dry. I let them go dry between each watering, but then I water them right away and give them a good soak at that point. Uh, fertilization for orchid cactuses, typically about once a month is about all they need. They don't really need very much, but it's nice to give them a little bit to work with uh, just so they have a bit of nutrient. And uh, remember that some of them cascade downwards like this one and other ones will climb. And so I have lots of climbing varieties of epiphyllums and they're just amazing. They grow right up to my ceiling upstairs and grow across the ceiling. It's just crazy. And I've got videos of some of those as well. If you look through the, the videos of the, maybe it's in the houseplant category, but check those out. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in today. I really appreciate your support. Um, remember to subscribe and to comment and hit the little like button. That's always helpful for us and uh, keeps things rolling along. So anyway, thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.